is Michael Weston. I used to be a spy until... When you're burned, Anna Shania, you're blacklisted. When you're burned, you've got nothing. No cash, no credit, no job history. You're stuck in whatever city they decide to dump you in. Miami. Miami. You do whatever work comes your way. You rely on anyone who's still talking to you. A trigger-happy girlfriend. Yes, you can. An old friend who used to inform on you to the FBI. You know, spies. A bunch of bitchy little girls. Family, too. Hey, is that your mom again? If you're desperate. Oh, I need your help, Michael. And a down-and-out spy you met along the way. That's how we do it, people. Bottom line, as long as you're burned, you're not going anywhere. It's a deep cover job. We're going after the leader of a terrorist network. Two hour notice to get to Cuba to bust somebody out of a Russian black site? That's a woman, that's all I know. Well, she must be pretty damn important. She could be the key to what his group is up to. I want to sit at the table, so I know. To do what we do, you have to be willing to give up everything. I have nothing! My friends, they moved on. You're the only thing I have left. Michael Allen West, welcome. I am the man you've been waiting to meet. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Old loyalties die hard. And I need to know that you've left yours behind. Who was your training officer? When were you recruited by the Central Intelligence Agency? Describe your relationship with Mr. Carter. A man who has no secrets can trust himself. I told you. This one's a keeper. I'm James. Welcome to the family. few things riskier than taking down a high priority target during a meeting in a public place. You're usually operating alone, out of radio contact, surrounded by civilians. While your support has to stay out of sight, often blocks away, so they won't be detected. Okay, everybody, this is it. Target's at the meeting with Weston at noon. We are now at three minutes until noon. Bravo team, you got anything? Nothing yet. Alpha team? No sign of them. You get stood up, sweetheart? No, I'm just early. The hardest part of the job is that until the target shows up, your job is to just sit there and try to act natural. The thing to remember is that you're not just setting a trap, you're also the bait. All right, well, look sharp, everybody. You see James, you see anybody who could be James, you call it in. You're not gonna miss this son of a bitch. You dropped your phone, hon. A customer found it. Oh, that's not my phone. <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm pretty sure it is. Sweet little boy, is he yours? This is my nephew. Uh, yes, this is my phone. Thank you. A little late. I believe I'm right on time, Michael. I thought we were going to have a face-to-face. -face. Don't worry. We will. Give me yours on that call now. I'm trying, sir, but it looks like every call in the state is being routed through that tower. Get I can't... the NSA on it, then. Get me on that call. Let me guess. They're changing the venue. There's a car waiting at the corner of Collins and Seventh. It leaves in two minutes. Be there. What if I don't make it? You will. Weston's moving. Keep eyes on him, but don't get too close. For a spy, the strain of a deep cover assignment goes beyond just being alone, surrounded by enemies who'd kill you if they knew your identity.
If you want to survive, you can't let any of that strain show. You have to project total confidence, total comfort, and greet your enemies like old friends. Michael, welcome. How's your trip? Car, boat, helicopter, car again? You didn't want to throw a train in for good measure? It's not a bad idea. Talk to logistics, see what they can do. A lot of trouble to get to. Where am I exactly? Wherever you go, where you are. Michael. James, I passed a little loyalty test. Why do I get the sense you still don't trust me? Michael, you wouldn't be within 100 miles of this place if I didn't trust you. Then why keep me in the dark? You spent your whole life in the dark working for the CIA. I'm just turning on the lights. Come on. Lots to talk about. Nice. Very clean. That's true. In my experience, all you need to get things done is the right plan, right people, a good cup of coffee, it doesn't hurt. Now, have you had the chance to recuperate since our last meeting? I slept for two days. It's unnecessary unpleasantry. I had to understand the core of you. What makes you tick? Do you know why you're here, Michael? My skills, my training. No. Well, that's part of it, of course, but no. Because of what you've seen, what you've done, you still have a soul. I don't understand. Let me ask you something. In your career, how many times have you had to execute an action that you knew was morally wrong for the mission? You make a deal with someone who you know is a monster because you had to follow orders. Too many times. And I was the same once. And then one day, I was done with that. I can't fight and bleed for men without principle anymore. That's why I created this network. To be the conscience to do the right thing. Now, when we find a monster, we don't make a deal with it. We destroy it. Is that something that you'd be interested in? I wouldn't be within 100 miles of this place if I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. There's your first monster, Marco Cabral. He was brought up in the DR, educated in England, came back home, got himself a job. Head of the Dominican Narcotics Police. Correct. He's also the DR's biggest drug smuggler. He used his position to slaughter his rivals, exploit the less fortunate, take over. And now he's arranged a deal with the Brits in exchange for his intelligence network. He gets a very comfortable retirement in England. I want you to get to him first. I want you to bring him to me. This operation has to be precise, quiet, under the radar, so you may select one person. Any resources you need, they'll be provided. And there's one last thing. When Burke found you in the DR, he was working on this. I think he'd want you to finish it for him. So. It would be an honor. Is everything? Organized by date, going back 15 years, the pattern is clear. Good. Good work. Make sure we have hard copies of this for the trip. Strong. Any word on Mike? No, nothing yet. Axe is on his way down to join him now. They're doing some kind of job for James, but that's all we know. So what, we're just sitting on our hands? No, Porter. Actually, we've been quite busy going over the financial records that Fiona Michael stole a few weeks ago. And we have a new lead. Okay, what is it? It's not what. It's who. Looks like James has a friend in Biloxi, a mental patient. He's been paying his bills for years. Really? Why? What's, what's so special about the guy? Well, that's what you and Glenn Ann are going to help me find out. Yeah, I don't know if Bee's going to be down for a last-minute CIA excursion. I don't really care what she's down for, Porter. Both of you are getting your butts on that plane. Wheel's up in four hours, and I will see you there. Okay, fine. Since you asked so nicely, I'll talk to her. <laughs> You sure you have to meet Maddie right now? You can't just call her, so you can't make it? She was upset. It sounded urgent. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But we got a CIA plane waiting for us right now. We're late. Strong's going to be pissed. Well, I'm going to worry about what Madeline West will do if I blow her off. Fair enough. Just be quick, please. Uh, hey, Charlie. Hi. Say hi to Aunt Fiona. Hi, Aunt Fiona. Drop her on my cigarette. Got to be nice, honey. It has to be me. Okay. I'm going to go talk to Aunt Fiona, all right? I'm keeping an eye on you. What's up? I had a pretty busy day. Yeah, I know. Um, actually, that's what I want to talk to you about. Your busy day. I got a call from your boyfriend about your busy day. Carl's closure? Yes. I know, this is beyond awkward coming from me. But he's worried, and he knows you and I are friends, and I'm the only person he had to talk to. He says you're going out of town. Yeah, I told him all about it. Jesse and I are just going to Mississippi. 
business trip? I've been around long enough to know you're lying to him. And he knows it too. So what's really going on? It's about the organization Michael's working to take down. It's classified. As Michael's mother, I'm very grateful to you for helping him bring them down. And I'm your friend too, Phil. And you keep doing this. You're going to lose that young friend of yours who I think you care very much about. I know. If I do this, I risk losing him. And if I don't, and the mission fails, and we go to prison, I lose him anyway. Then I suggest you get on with your day. Hey, Sam. Before you say another word, Mike, there's something that I gotta say. I'm not sure if I went in on this op. Screwing up an extradition deal run by the MI6, as in the security service of our closest ally? They're giving a drug smuggler a comfortable retirement. You read the file, Sam. Cabral has killed entire families. They may be our ally, but I'm not gonna lose sleep over this. Okay, but you do remember what the job is, right? Why we're here? Because it ain't to take down Marco Cabral. James is the target. Cabral is just a means to an end. So we're clear on that. We're clear. So, what's the plan? Cabral is supposed to have his final sit-down with MI6 at a restaurant in his hotel. Well, can we take him there? That's the idea, Sam. The challenge is that James wants this done quietly, and we won't have a team. So a direct grab is out, then? Our best bet is to beat MI6 to the punch and offer Cabral a better deal. You sure that's gonna fly? Because he's been talking to our friends across the ditch for a year. Why would he jump ship now? Well, that's a start. We'll delay the British team with a fake bomb threat at the embassy. You'll go in, make the offer, and I'll cover you from the street. Okay, and you'll cover me with... Anything you want. That's a lot of guns, Mikey. When operating in third world countries, a dollar is usually a lot more useful than a bullet. In a place where the government runs on bribes and connections, you can get a lot done with a nice suit and a bag of cash. Okay, Mike, I'm in place. When he signed up for Majesty's Secret Service? No, MI6 has not approached the hotel. The lockdown at the British Embassy is working. Good, it sounds like our uh, suspicious package did its trick. And just so you know, I'm letting your spy friends buy me the good champagne. You know, just to help sell the cover ID. Knock yourself out, pal. Looks like we're good to go. Cabral's right on time. You uh, got me covered? Yeah, Sam, I got a view of the entire courtyard. Senor Cabral, welcome. They conocerte, as I believe your countrymen say. What's going on? Where are the British? Oh, your British friends. Well, they've been um, delayed. I was hoping we'd have a little chat before they got here. Yeah, I'm about to. Who are you? And how do you know about it? About your arrangement with MI6? Well, let's just say I make it my business to know such things. I'll get right to the point. My name is Charles Finley, and I represent a major conglomerate with interest in the Caribbean. We were told that you're looking for a fresh start, so we'd like to make an offer. Come back. An offer, you say? Yes, yeah, a very generous offer. Stock options, company housing, a seven-figure retainer per year, and that's just the start. Interesting. So tell me something, Mr. Finley. What does a consortium like yours want with a man like me? Well, we're moving into this region, and we need someone with influence, connections, someone who isn't afraid to, as they say, get their hands a little bloody. I've found that blood always washes right off. <laughs> See? Now, that's the positive attitude we're looking for. You make big promises, Mr. Finley. Tell me why I should believe a word you say. How about a million reasons? And that's just the signing bonus. That's yours right now if you go with us instead of MI6. That is very tempting. But you know what's more tempting? I take your money, and I go with MI6. Remember, Mr. Finley, I'm not afraid to get my hands bloody. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, Senor Cabral. Oh, no. And why not? You see, you could kill me, but then my sniper would have to kill you. And that sounds like a bad start to a great business relationship. Well, you've got my number. When you change your mind, you give me a call. Mike, I don't know how many times i got to say this, but this mission is a bust. I mean, I don't know if you were paying attention, but I was down there with a bunch of guns in my face, and Cabral was very clear. Oh, son. 
This isn't about giving up, brother. This is about facing reality. This guy's gonna be on a boat back to jolly old England in, what, eight hours? Which means we have eight hours to change his mind. How do you propose to do that? Listen, Sam, there's a reason why he took this deal. Cabral has enemies. He's already survived two assassination attempts. We can use that. What are you thinking? Well, we know the marina where he's meeting with MI6. If we can convince him the British can't protect him, our plan will be his only option. Mike, I don't care how much cool crap those guys got you. We are not attacking two fully equipped teams. No attack, sabotage. Sabotage the British boat, make it look like his political enemies did it. I got a word for that. Nightmare. It's either that or failure. And you know as well as I do, this can't fail. Welcome to Biloxi. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Yeah, not so much. All your secret budgets you can't spend for a bigger plane? I've been in bumper cars with more legs than that thing. I'll bring it up with Congress. Here's the situation. Officially, a person of interest was transferred here for an outpatient procedure. We'll do the interrogation in one of the surgery rooms, ship them back. Do we have a name? We have about 50. Every time he got moved to another institute for the criminally insane, he got a new file and a new ID. For now, it's John Doe. I'm not liking the criminally insane thing. Is it dangerous? Well, we have to assume he is. He's been in isolation on a double dose of Haldol since as far back as the records go. We've been stepping him down off the drugs since this morning. You sure that's a good idea? This guy's got a special forces tattoo. I prefer my trained killers on the sleepy side. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. We need him cogent and answering questions. I'll lead the interrogation, but I want you two backing me up, filling in any blanks with what you know about James. Security Cat scan right away. Get him to radiology. What happened? Where's John Doe? We were escorting to the holding room. Somehow he got out of his restraints. We have to find him now. If he gets out of this hospital, you need to lock this place down. Or the CIA isn't even officially here. We order a lockdown, we can expose the entire operation. Well, we're not going to catch a special forces operative with hospital security. Quarantine. What? Contact the CDC, tell them there's a, an anthrax outbreak. That's the only way to lock this place down. All right, I'll make the call. You two alert security. If you need to sabotage a boat, an explosive charge underneath the waterline is usually the most efficient way to do it. The challenge is that normal explosive devices in salt water don't mix. Remote detonators won't transmit underwater, so you need to use a timer. The components can't get wet, so you need to make sure the device has a waterproof seal. And once you're done comes the really hard part, putting the device where you need it. How are we looking, Sam? Well, the MI6 guys are still sweeping the boat. Looks like they're almost done. You sure you want to do this, Mike? We only got about 10 minutes before Cabral shows. We have to, Sam. It's our last shot. Senor Cabra, you're early. Everything in order? Just as we discussed, yes. The boat will take you to the Cayman Islands. From there, you'll go by private plane to London. Good. Check the boat. See, there's no need for that, Senor Cabral. My men have already checked everything. Senor Boat, a dissident put a bomb in my home just a month ago. Another tried to assassinate me in the marketplace just a few days ago. Every second I am on this island, my life is in danger. Which is all the more reason why you should depart immediately. I will. After my men have checked it. Go. How about looking, Sam? Uh, Mike, we got a problem. Cabral's early, and he's sending his guys to the boat. Time to abort. If we lose Cabral, we lose James. Mike, pull the plug and get out of there. I can still do this. Yeah, you know what? That's crazy talk. You won't have time to plant the bomb and get a safe distance away. An underwater explosion isn't something you want to be close to, because water doesn't compress under pressure. The shock wave carries a long distance without losing kinetic energy. And if you're still within the blast radius when the bomb goes off, that kinetic energy will shatter every bone in your body. Yeah, Mike. It worked. <laughs> well, 
You're lucky that's the worst of it. I still think we should check you out for concussion, too. The blast pushed me into some rocks. I'm fine. Barely. Got the job done. Maybe. There's still no guarantee that Cabral is going to call. Meanwhile, you're out there risking your life, and for what? You know what for? The CIA. Yeah, yeah, they're going to throw us in a hole if we don't help them get this James guy. But you know what? Life in a CIA prison is still better than death face down in the middle of some godforsaken marina on some cockamamie mission that... Don't get smug. Finley here. Senor Finley. This is Marco Cabral. Uh, nice to hear from you, Mr. Cabral. How are you this lovely afternoon? Circumstances have changed. Your offer, is it still on the table? Why, yes, it is indeed. Could you tell me where you'd like to meet? Absolutely. As soon as we can. Well, there's one more hour of our quarantine, but we gotta wrap this up fast. What do we have? Well, the good news is he hasn't left the building. We have cameras at every exit. Nothing's come in or out since the lockdown. Have you swept all the floors yet? Well, that's the bad news. Security's come to every edge and there's no sign of him. What, he just disappeared? I mean, where did he okay. go? Well, guys, check this out. Third floor security corridor camera picks him up going all the way down the hall. And then poof. Just be. The only place he could have gone from there is the roof. Pull Nelson and Jacobs off the hang yard. On, hang on, the... hang on. If this guy's hiding on the roof, why would he wait until they got all the way to the access door to kill the camera? He's been sedated. He's not thinking straight. Or he wants us to think he's up there. This guy with special forces, he knows how many people we've got. If we start pulling people off of exits, we might be giving him exactly what he wants. But you know, last time I checked, even Deltas can't turn invisible. He's got to be on the roof. We've cleared the building. There's no place else for him to go. What about the elevator shaft? It's right where the camera went down. Son of a bitch. Okay. We're approaching the elevator doors in the basement. Which is also the morgue, by the way. Thanks for that. Any sign, Porter. All right, people, let's look alive. Gotta open these doors at exactly the same time. I don't want this guy getting away. It's not him. Hey, Porter. I'm liking my roof idea more and more. I'm telling you, he's still in the building, man. Jesse? Jesse? How's it looking out there? No sign of surveillance. We're all set. Cabral said 2 o'clock? Yep. Uh, the north parking structure, 2 o'clock. So I've been checking out this kidnap kit they put together for us. Not bad. I think we wait till we get out of the city before we gift wrap him. So... What is this? Alifane, animal sedative. It'll keep him out cold until he gets to whatever pit James is throwing him into. Pit, huh? He's just getting what he deserves. Hey, I'm no friend of Cabral. I mean, the guy almost killed me. I'm just concerned that you're enjoying this a little too much. Enjoying this? I've been working on this job for almost a year, Sam. That's what I'm worried about. Look, I'm your best friend. I can see that look in your eye. This guy, James, he's getting to you. They all are. I know. That's why I need you here. I know who James is. I know who Sonia is. But it's difficult to work so hard to be part of something, knowing you have to destroy it. These people believe in what they're doing. I'm sorry I'm putting you in this situation, but I don't think I can do this alone. You don't have to go. All right. Looks like we're in business. Senor Cabral, right on time. Pleasure to see you again. I'm so glad we had a second chance to get acquainted. You brought the money? Yep, it's here and it's all yours upon signing the employment agreement. Paperwork's in the car, so you can study it in the lap of luxury on the way to the docks. We'll take it from here, amigo. It's okay. Is there a problem? No, no problem. I prefer to take my own car. We'll follow you to the boat. If I like what I see, we have a deal. If I don't like what I see, I have my men. I understand the need for security, but a parade of angry guys with guns is just going to paint a bullseye on your forehead. My men are the best on the island. They can handle any attack. That's all well and good, but see, we're going to a private marina, so... Mr. Finley, why are you so anxious to separate me from my men? Hey, whoa, hey, easy, cowboy. Senor Cabral, we're both businessmen here. Put the weapons away, I'm sure we can handle this without violence. One of the basic rules of combat is 
Kill him. Hit first and hit hard. You only get one chance to surprise your enemy. The important thing is to make it count. are trained extensively on what to do when taken prisoner. If escape is impossible, the most important thing is to make a connection with your captor. Find out what they want and try to talk your way out of the situation without bloodshed. Hey man, my friends are outside. They're going to be coming in here any minute. What's that? I'd be still if I were you. Of course, it's a lot harder to connect with someone who happens to be criminally insane. This is ethylene oxide and perchloric acid. It's highly explosive and it's going to buy us some privacy. Listen to me. You don't have to do this. Yeah. I'm afraid I do. Now I'm gonna ask you some questions, and if I don't like your answers, or if I think that you're lying, I am going to take us to hell together. You hear me? We want to negotiate. Just back off, or I'm gonna kill him! We're gonna have to breach. This thing is already out of control. We start blowing doors off of hinges, our quarantine story is shot. Well, I would rather explain a breach door than a dead body, or two. I'm gonna need a decor and blasting caps. Now, is he here? Is who here? <laughs> I know who sent you, so what I want to know is, is he here? I would love to answer you. I have no idea what you're talking about. James! Where is James Kendrick? James Kendrick. That's his last name, Kendrick? Well, you just tell me more about that guy than we've been able to find out for a month. What? I'm working with the CIA. We're after the head of a terrorist network. Up until about 10 seconds ago, we only knew him as James. Ellie, no, you're lying. I'm not lying. You're lying. This I'm is another one of his tricks. See, he sent you to get rid of me, and now that I've turned the tables, you're pretending that you don't know him. Buddy, you got a bomb around my neck. I'm not trying to trick you. I don't work for James Kendrick. I'm here to help you. <laughs> Wanna let me in on the joke? <laughs> Do you want to know why I've been rotting in a mental institution for the past 15 years? That bastard put me there. When he finds out. Wait, 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 wait! No, oh, no, 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 no! No, everybody, wait, wait! We're all on the same team here. Back off or everybody dies. Jesse, you have an improvised explosive on your chest and he has the trigger. How are you on the same team? Listen to me. He's the victim here. I don't think she believes you. No, she does, because she trusts me and she's my friend. She's gonna put the gun down right now. What about him? That's a CIA agent I was telling you about. I wouldn't exactly call him a friend, but I guarantee you this, he wants to take down James just as much as you do. That's right. I can help you. Whatever James did to you, he took my life away. You help me. And I'll do everything I can to give it back to you. Cabral doing back there? I sleep on like a heavily sedated evil baby. How much further to the rendezvous? A few miles. James is meeting us at a commercial marina outside Santo Domingo. Extracting a high-value target from a foreign country is a challenge even under ideal conditions. If the capture of the target left witnesses and raised alarms, it's even harder. The problem is that high-value targets tend to have a lot of friends and allies. They can alert local authorities, set up search parties, and if you're really unlucky, they can bring out some big guns of their own. What the hell's going on up there? Oh, crap. Looks like Cabral's DCA, guys. Second the cabo. Manos arriba. Look, can we just hightail it out of here? No, that 50 cal would shred us before we even turn around. Apaguen el cabo y salgan con las manos en el aire. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Sam, wait. Wait, wait for what? For them to kill us? They're too far away to see into the car. There might be a way out. 
What size shirt do you think he wears? Repito, apague el carro y salgo las manos en el aire. Okay, Mike, you got 50 feet to cover. Your hands are tied. You're wearing a headband. You feeling lucky? I'll take that as a yes. Hola, muchachos. Lo siento, uh, mi español es muy malo. Te entrego Cabral. Si me dejan pasar, todos ganamos. Está bien. Suelta al señor Cabral. Ok. Está aquí. Good luck, brother. Camina. Intentan algo. Lo mato. One of the oldest tricks in espionage is the false surrender of a prisoner. It's a desperate move used only when you're completely outmanned and outgunned. It means approaching your enemy alone and unarmed. It's not ideal, but it will get you close enough to attack. <laughs> It is a pleasure to finally meet you, Mr. Axe. I've heard good things. Yeah, right back at you. It's good work today. The DR loses a murderer, and we gain access to the largest private intelligence network in the Caribbean. Nice boat, James. A little small to fit all of us and a box. Yes, yes, it is. You two won't be coming with. Your tickets under these names. Safe travels. Go for it. James, I know Cabral's file backwards and forwards. Whatever you have planned for him, I can help. Take us with you. I admire your enthusiasm, Michael. Your part in this is over. Now, you've proven yourself to be everything I could have hoped for, and more. Go home, get some rest. You earned it. Oh, you heard the man? Let's go home. Who's home? Awful vacation. You have been busy. Yeah, with a little help from Porter and Glen Ann. You read the new file on James? Very impressive service record. Yeah, no kidding. Delta Force. Gotta love having our elite military training turned against us. Do we know why you went off the rails? No, that's why you're here. This new asset is a Delta II, Peter Millard. Same unit, disappeared at the same time. And Millard refuses to tell us anymore. Says he wants to talk to the guy that was undercover with Kendrick. Why? Why don't you ask him yourself? You the guy who's working with James? No, I'm the one working to stop him. What makes you think you can do that? Because I'm willing to do whatever it takes to go as far as I have to go. As far as you have to go. Tell me, do you know how far James is willing to go? I'm starting to. I doubt it. What do you know about Mogadishu? I know you and James served together there. According to the report, your unit was wiped out protecting the village. He was presumed KIA, and so were you. That was what the board says. Why don't you tell me what really happened? My unit was sent to take out a warlord outside Mogadishu. Turned out the intelligence was bad. The warlord was a kid wannabe with a few rifles and some punk friends. The camp was a village full of women and children. We radioed in. Get some suit up in line to want to blotch on his record. Orders came down. Wiped him out anyway. A lot of guys didn't like it. But orders were orders. I couldn't do it. James was my best friend in the unit. I asked him to talk him out of it. He said he'd try. But it didn't work? No. Tell him to disobey a direct order. I told him we had to do something. He said he'd handle it. And I thought... God, I don't know what I thought. What did he do? Peter, if I'm going to help you, I need to know what I'm facing. What did he do? Whole unit. 
slit their throats while they were sleeping. You think he can stop him? No one can stop him. I tried. He put me away. Buried. Fifteen years. I love that man. I would have followed him anywhere. And he let me straight. 